horizontally past one another. Most faults are normal along spreading zones, thrust along subduction zones, and strike slip along faults. North America and all the other continents seem to stay in the same locations year after year. Actually, however, the continents are moving slowly relative to one another. In the past 200 million years, the continents have moved from the locations shown. The theory of plate tectonics accounts for this movement. According to this theory, the continents and ocean floors are parts of about 30 plates, the largest of which are shown. Each plate consists partly of crust, the outermost layer of the Earth, and partly of mantle, a thick layer of hot rock. The plates slide on the asthenosphere, a layer of mantle that is so hot it flows, even though it remains solid. Two hundred million years ago, all the continents were parts of a single landmass called Pangaea. Pangaea broke apart into masses called Laurasia and Gondwanaland. In turn, Laurasia and Gondwanaland broke apart. One piece of Gondwanaland, India, later joined Asia. In the next 50 million years, the continents may move to these locations. The region where the plate melts is the plate boundary. The plates may move apart, collide, or slide past each other. The three types of plate boundaries based on the movement were identified. Convergent or colliding boundaries. These boundaries occur when two plates bump into each other. The leading edge of one plate sinks into the mantle under the edge of another plate. Collisions can occur between two oceanic plates or between two continental plates. When a continental plate collides with oceanic plate, the less dense oceanic plate sinks into asthenosphere. Where the mantle absorbs the edge of a sinking plate, heat and pressure create volcanoes and earthquakes. Trenches bordering the Pacific Ocean are regions where the Pacific plate is sinking. divergent or spreading boundaries. These plates move away from each other, leaving a gap in between. As the plates spread, the gap created is filled up right away by molten rock. That comes from the sea. Iceland, an island in the North Atlantic, emerged at the spreading boundary along the mid-Atlantic ridge, Transform fault boundaries. Transform fault occurs when two plates rub or slip past one another. 
faults or cracks in the earth. Earthquakes shake the land when the rocks move along a fault. San Andres Fault in California is an example. Earthquakes one of the most frightening and destructive phenomena of nature is a severe earthquake and its terrible after effects. An earthquake is a sever movement of the earth caused by the abrupt release of strain that has accumulated over a long time. For hundreds of millions of years, the forces of plate tectonics have shaped the earth as the huge plates that form the Earth's surface slowly move over, under and past each other. Sometimes, the movement is gradual. At other times, the plates are locked together, unable to release the accumulating energy. When the accumulated energy grows strong enough, the plates break free. If the earthquake occurs in a populated area, it may cause many deaths and injuries, and extensive property damage. Today we are challenging the assumption that earthquakes at present are an uncontrollable and unpredictable hazard to life and property. Scientists have begun to estimate the locations and likelihoods of future damaging earthquakes. Sites of greatest hazard are being identified, and definite progress is being made in designing structures that will withstand the effects of earthquakes. There are many different types of earthquakes, tectonic, volcanic, collapse and explosion. The type of earthquake depends on the region where it occurs and the geological makeup of that region. The most common are tectonic earthquakes. These occur when rocks in the Earth's crust break due to geological forces created by the movement of tectonic plates. The volcanic earthquakes occur in conjunction with volcanic activity. Collapse earthquakes are small earthquakes in underground caverns and mines, and explosion earthquakes result from the explosion of nuclear and chemical devices. The biggest earthquake ever to hit the lower 48 states was not the 6.7 Northridge quake in 1994 or the 6.9 Loma Prieta quake in 1989, or even the 7.8 San Francisco quake of 1906. But the series of three quakes which struck near St. Louis in 1811 and 1812. The Earth didn't just shake, it discharged bizarre sand geysers spewed strange vapors, made the Mississippi River run backwards, and sucked lakes dry. All of a sudden, the hand of God comes down and strikes right where you're at. For many, it seemed to be the end of the world. These people were scared to death. But it wasn't over. Thousands of aftershocks rattled the continent for five more months. They rang church bells in Boston. They rattled China in New York. They were felt in Detroit. They were felt in Washington, D.C. What if that same earthquake were to strike the Midwest today? The lives of at least 11 million Americans would be in peril. The problem today is that what was an unpopulated part of